Tonight on Five Rounds, we look back at the huge spectacle that was Bellator MMA and Glory Dynamite, where mixed martial arts and kickboxing combined to give fans a hybrid of combat sports action. In the Bellator Light Heavyweight One Night Tournament, we saw former UFC contender Phil Davis emerge victorious, giving him the next title shot against Liam McGeary, who defeated Tito Ortiz by inverted triangle choke in the main event to retain his title. Plus, Robin Black and I discuss Fedor Emelianenko's decision to sign with a new Japanese promotion rather than the UFC. And finally, we will look ahead to UFC Fight Night Barnett versus Nelson in this jam-packed edition of Five Rounds, and it starts right now. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the FN Studios. This is Five Rounds. He's Robin Black. I am John Ramdeen. We are looking at the entire landscape of mixed martial arts, uh, starting with what happened this past weekend. Bellator Dynamite, coupled with Glory Kickboxing, put on a sensational show in San Jose, California. Also looking ahead to the UFC's return to Japan. Uh, we're going to start with the main event of Bellator Dynamite. Liam McGeary putting his undefeated record and his 205-pound championship on the line, taking on the 40-year-old Tito Ortiz. Will we get to see the Tito Ortiz of old? Uh, he said, uh, basically, the Huntington Beach bad boy, as he was once known and still should be known, yeah. uh, said that I have no advantage here. This guy's younger, he's faster, he's bigger and stronger. But when you have those, the, the wrestling credentials and the mixed martial arts experience of Tito Ortiz, you can force the fight sometimes where you need it to go. I thought Tito looked really yeah, good. Looked good. Really good. Physically good. He was moving well. Sometimes these older guys, what you're looking at is a slight breakdown in their physicality. That they don't, they look kind of like a shadow of how they used to move. You still see the movements, but it's been slowed by age. Frank Mir recently came out after a long break and he has looked good, smooth, he's moving his hands nice. Tito Ortiz looked like a little running back there for a bit. Also, I gotta say, Bellator in advance had set up a little sort of analysis where they said, McGeary, he has no takedown defense. Tito made them look right on yeah. that one, you know? That's but Tito, he, it's he, just like saying, you know, we'll look ahead to Phil Davis and Emmanuel Newton. Emmanuel Newton trains at the body shop with Antonio McKee. You know for a fact yeah. that the guy spends time wrestling. Phil Davis made him look like yeah. he didn't know how to wrestle. Yeah, so. and that's what Tito did as well. McGeary really did feel like a dual specialist, that old school WEC dual specialist. I'll beat you up on the feet, if we end up on the ground, I'll submit you. That hasn't been a workable strategy for the last few years because of the importance of wrestling. But Liam McGeary made that not only a workable strategy, but a slick looking strategy too. Taking Tito out. I thought Tito had that sense of panic in the arm bar. And that panic carried over by the time he got caught in that triangle. Slick stuff, playing to his body shape, playing to those long legs, and really looking good. But we've heard them say in the past that a lot of the fighters coming from the UK simply don't have the wrestling background or they're behind in the time, so to speak. We know that the entire sport, they're all improving when it comes to wrestling, takedown defense, and the getting up abilities. But for a fight like this, where you know that your opponent, his specific strategy is he probably won't want to stand and trade with me because I'm going to have a bigger reach, and I'm, that's one of the best ways for me to win, is to try to knock you out. Chances are he's going to try to put me down to yeah. the ground, so the focus is, force me to the canvas. Okay, I'm gonna to try to knock him out. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna submit him from my back. And when you've got Henzo, the Henzo Gracie team in your corner, you know that they're gonna be prepared. Yeah, and hey, the reason it's not always a workable strategy anymore is not only if a guy can take you down, he can stay safe in your guard, but even sometimes when you win, you don't win. Go back and look at an awesome fight. Miguel Torres versus Demetrius Johnson. Miguel Killer won. fight. And Miguel won we in our eyes. Yeah. And I'm the biggest Demetrius Johnson yeah. mark out there. And we thought Miguel won that fight. He was taken down. He surrendered the takedown and went for sweeps from the bottom. Yeah. We thought he even he won that fight constantly. against who I think is the best fighter in the world. The judges saw it for Johnson. So sometimes you can't win that way. I thought Tito started off very, very well. Looked really good. Looked explosive. It looked physically good. Liam McGeary just caught him, and uh, that was a legit clean win. Yeah, it's, it's excellent for the Bellator organization as well. Tito Ortiz, I know there are people talking about, you know, retirement and this and that. Tito doesn't need to retire. We've seen that he can still be competitive, just needs to have the right opponents. And, of course, Liam McGeary now looking to defend his title uh, once again down the road. We have this four-man tournament that transpired in San Jose. Phil Davis looking like a beast, and... I'll be the first guy to say that I was never the biggest Phil Davis uh, supporter because of the fact that when, it, when the time came for him to get into the fire, he kind of fled. He didn't move forward. And this was not the same Phil Davis. We, we've seen a new wrinkle in his game, very aggressive. I mean, his wrestling was outstanding. Emmanuel Newton constantly trying to 
get up and he managed to get up for a second. But man, Phil Davis, he's just that, that perfect blend of athleticism and wrestling and the has, has that competitive mind. Mm -hmm. And I will be the first one to say that I have been a <laughs> yeah, Phil Davis right. supporter. And we agree on a ton of stuff. I'm going to say 80% of things. That one we disagreed on because I always saw Phil Davis. The fact that he is an athlete who executes plays does not automatically mean you're not a good fighter. He is an athlete. He's told us. He's, the goal is to win. The goal is to execute plays that slowly take away your opponent and win. Personally, I think that's a beautiful way to compete in the sport of mixed martial arts. There are times where doing that makes people, boo, Phil Davis on the ground, stand him up. All that kind of stuff happens, but he's winning fights. But on this night, in two fights, he was able to do that and look exciting and look you know, really, really fun to watch and look like every bit the top five heavy, uh, light heavyweight in the world that he is. You think about, though, one of the reserve fighters who ended up facing Phil Davis in the finals, Francis Carmont, who was cornered by George St. Pierre. He had that strategy when he was in the UFC, play a very conservative mm -hmm. game, and the focus is to get the victory. We don't care if we entertain anybody, but look what, look what happens. As soon as the, the UFC had the opportunity, snip, 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 you lose a couple yeah. of fights to legit talent, you're taking a walk. And, you know, Phil Davis, again, I don't think anybody expected that Phil Davis would knock out Francis <laughs> Carmont in the main event. Yeah, that was awesome. I, I, and I'm happy for Phil Davis because he's a great fighter who, just like you're pointing out, you know, either you get cut after a couple losses or you don't get renewed for the money that you deserve yeah. because of the type of performer you are. I truly think that's wrong. We'll get into that more today on Five Rounds Today, our podcast. Make sure you check it out. We're going to get a little deeper into this idea, the philosophy of how to fight and how to win fights. We understand that exciting the audience is a part of the game, but so is executing the beauty of martial arts to win. Phil did both those things, and good for you, Phil Davis. 155-pound matchup, Mike Bronzoulis taking on Josh Thompson. I don't know if you've had, to, uh, when you think about Josh Thompson, it's like, where is he currently? You know, is this guy as big as he believes in his mind? When I think about Josh Thompson, I think about a pioneer. I think about a pioneer who is, you know, one of the, 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 one of the guys in the lightweight division that made people, you know, take notice. Eve, uh, Eve Edwards is one of those guys, yeah. James Pulver, BJ Penn, kind of around the same Gilbert era, Melendez. Gilbert Melendez. And, and then you look at Josh Thompson and, as a pioneer being a part of American Kickboxing Academy as well. Frank Shamrock was there. Frank Shamrock gave him the name The Punk. So he's made his way and hasn't needed the Ultimate Fighting yeah. Championship. When you look at him now, 36 years of age, does he still have room to grow? Can he help the organization become bigger? Yeah, I think he's exactly where he would like to be. He did get a, a chance to go up and fight in the UFC. Something that I think was on his, Gills, uh, Alvarez, yeah, all sure. of these are the top guys outside of the UFC. They all wanted a chance. He went up there, but this is a guy who does best as a guy on a punk rock indie label. You know, not a guy signed to a major label, a guy that's out there as a driving force of another organization. He's back where he belongs, had a great performance. That, performance you expected from him against a guy a little lower down in skill level and ex and even high level experience in, in particular than him had the kind of performance you wanted in San Jose where he has a big audience on a show where he is a big star it's a perfect fit for everybody what was your uh, impressions of the entire show the because uh, most people bl had a great time you know you're there for entertainment you of course you want to appreciate the sport of fighting and the art of fighting but it is it's also entertainment yes. you have the cage there you have the ring there did it work bellator dynamite and glory kickboxing merging together do you think this is something that's going to get the fans excited moving forward i think so i think i mean it's a crowded landscape it's a crowded space you have to do something at it's a scary thing but you have to do something to differentiate yourself and i think they did that i think the one issue with the kickboxing as fun as it is and when people like we were just referring to with phil in the old days or francis carmont if you're down and you're playing conservative people are like stand up and fight yeah in kickboxing there is no grappling there is no triangles and guillotines and chicken wings and none of that stuff There's nothing but the kickboxing but I felt like they tried to create a scenario in which you would have big knockouts which is scary and sometimes right. dangerous and it didn't end up producing you know you had uh, Paul Daly against a guy who was one and two and he took Paul Daly to the limit which was exciting for him but you, they wanted some knockouts and it didn't produce but man you can't go hunting knockouts uh, you want to talk about hunting knockouts uh, if you didn't get a chance to see it live on Fight Network, the rematch between Justin Gaethje and Luis Palomino for the World Series of Fighting Championship. An outstanding matchup. Uh, check your listings for the replay. It is must-see 
TV. Straight ahead, Fedor Emelianenko snubs the UFC yet again to sign with a new Japanese promotion. We'll discuss that and the UFC heavyweight clash between Josh Barnett and Roy Nelson when five rounds on FN continues.